for mental health issues, this is fantastic. Get out, the fresh air, have a lovely walk. Uh, get rid of that funk in your head of all the negativity from COVID, the elections and everything like that. Or if you've got work problems, you know, just get out in the countryside, have a walk, clear the head, get those lungs filled with fresh air and enjoy it. It does wonders for your mental health. It really does. It does wonders. Hello to you all, it is a beautiful, lovely fall day, temperatures are gorgeous and once again we're in our Niagara region backyard exploring because there's so much to see and do in the Niagara region and today we come to a very special place which is located here in Lincoln in the Niagara region and we've come to Cave Springs. Alright so we're on an explore once again and joining me today on today's explore once again is my friend Dean. Dean, you ever, do you remember your video card this time? You got the video card. All right, he's got the video card. We're not too sure what we're on about. In the last video we did, which is down at the Jordan Old Railway, we finally got out to where we were going, and Dean goes, I forgot my memory card. So today he has it, he has his camera, and we're now about to explore uh, this great place, and I'll tell you more about it as we walk around. It's not very deep. All right, this place apparently is littered with caves. And there isn't much of one here, but Dean just had a little look. A little entrance to a cave there. And we just started the walk, so we'll see how far we get and see what we can see as we go along. Right, this conservation area um, was kind of purchased by the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Area and uh, back quite a few years ago. It was originally owned uh, by a lady called Margaret Reed, who also goes by the name of Margaret Reed the good old witch, or the good witch of this area. And uh, she lived here from 1971 to 2005. And uh, when she passed, uh, this then became all part of the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Area. Uh, she actually sold it to them in 1981, uh, but with a condition. And that condition was that she remained on the site and basically was the guardian of this whole area uh, for the 30 odd years she lived here, which is quite, until her death. Uh, she wrote a book, and in the book she details uh, quite a lot about the folklore of the area, the diversity of what you find around here, and stuff like that, which I'll leave links down below. Uh, we haven't come very far so far, and we've already come across a lot of fascinating things to see here. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, uh, she classed herself as a witch, uh, a good old witch, and she told the local kids in the area that would come up that she's uh, 300 years old. And she would tell them of uh, a fountain of youth of this place. Um, from the natural spring waters of the escarpment, which is basically why she still looked young, but yet she's over 300 years old. Do you understand what I'm on about here? Because I'm just rambling on about stuff I've read over the last few days. So bear with me if I go off tr uh, pace a little bit here. Anyway, Dean's going to exploring down here. So we're going to see if we can find any caves, see if we can find this underground lake they have here. Uh, we found the Red Barn, which we believe uh, she lived in. Uh, we'll check that out on the way back. There's too many kids around here at the moment, so we'll check that out on the way back. But Dean's got himself lost already, and he may be in a cave. So let's go and find Dean down here. I think I got it, buddy. Oh. Is anything down there? You could live in it. Live in it? Or, it, you know, it might drip in the rain and all that stuff. And you'd have to uh, shelter proof it in a sense. You're in poison ivy. <laughs> Emma, I'm on poison ivy. I don't want to fall into poison ivy and get it over my bloody hands. These freaking rocks. You go through there. Go. I got the GoPro. <laughs> See you later, buddy. 
Don't get your ass. Ah! <laughs> don't get your ass stuck. Yeah, there's freaking giant ticks in there right here too. Get some light in there. There we go. This is just like it's not really a cave, is it? It's just no. But you can see animals could probably live in here. Oh yeah, this there's would a couple be a big holes down there. Yeah, this would be a little wicked little shelter in yeah, there. Yeah, a great little den for a, a coyote or anything really. Oh my god, what a temperature drop down here. Oh, yeah. <sighs> it goes quite deep. There's probably spiders down there. That looks like something out of a movie from the World War One. The way that moss has grown all over the uh, the stone. Like a bunker. Yeah, yeah. didn't it didn't have that look like a bunker. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, look at this wall. It looks like it's actually a mortar. I'm wondering whether this is uh, yes, one of the. There's meant to be a couple of war wide uh, war hideouts here. I wonder if this is one of them. Because you would have thought that's a built wall for sure. Yeah, but this would be probably lost. And yeah, but without those trees there, which have grown over the last how many decades, this would have looked right over uh, Lake Ontario easily. All right, to me, this looks like this bit is probably man made. Uh, the way it's been formed, the rocks. And like I was saying, it is, they have noted there is a couple of uh, World War hideouts here. And to me, this looks like it's strategically, strategically done. I could be wrong. Uh, because where, where Dean is right there, Dean is just, just to look to the left, you're kind of looking right over the bay uh, there for uh, Lake Ontario, which is a clear view. And 40, 50 years ago, these trees probably wouldn't have been here. Or if they were, they'd have been a lot smaller. Some guy's doing some rock climbing up there. Mount Rushmore right there. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. We need to get up there. Yeah, I think it zigzags around anyway. We should be able to walk underneath it and probably walk up. All right, in the uh, background there, you can see that is uh, Lake Ontario, or the old shoreline of Lake Iroquois. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, which is just down there. And we're starting now to get to a slightly higher elevation. Uh, the escarpment rocks are just here. There's a couple of guys up there uh, doing some climbing. Dean's posing like a ballerina over here. I don't know if you can pick that up. He's got his arm in the air. It looks like the Statue of Liberty right now. And... Uh, we're gonna keep going up and we think this goes up and go around. Now I did find an app as I got here, which I should have done before I left, uh, called All Trails. And uh, it basically, it gives you all the trails marked out wherever you go, all these conservation areas. Uh, I didn't get a full chance to look at it because I was just downloading it when I was sat in the car uh, before we started the walk. Um, but I think this would have helped me out a lot more rather than just winging it like we're doing just now. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description uh, below for that app for anyone who wants to come out here for a nice walk or any conservation area. All trails, all trails something. But I'll put the link in below and I'll show you exactly what it looks like right here uh, to give you a better idea of what you're looking at. Oh, you could definitely stay out of the elements and a little bit of work and be happy in this area. Very, very cool. Another rock face over there. What are you doing, you freaking creep? You spying on me? He's dropping on my conversation with the rocks and caves. This 
a little bit of fitness feels like living. I totally love this. Gotta really watch it though, eh? Watch right where you step. Yeah, I feel it in my foot a little bit. Yeah, you gotta look, yeah, it's definitely not a place you just walk around with you. Well, I'm miss, the missing a bone, right? So. Oh, <laughs> that's all you need. No, I'm not gonna hurt myself, just, you know. Oh, I'm definitely bringing my dog here. I'm definitely out of breath. <laughs> all right, need some fitness. Go up here and uh, check this crevice up the up the pathway here. Pretty impressed. Been out uh, hiking a lot of conservation and areas in Niagara, and this is the first trail that I've seen so active with so many people. That's good to see. All right, once again, I'm going to refer to the UK once again, but. This, this kind of stone, these rock formation, uh, remind me very much of a few places in the UK. Uh, one I was just at not too long ago, actually, in Cornwall in the UK. Um, oh God, it's, it's a quarry I went into a few years ago. We actually went into the caves below and there's a lovely pool of water. Uh, but on the outside, it kind of looked like this. I'm trying to think of the name of that quarry. Menion? Is it in Menion? Minion. Yeah, I'll find it for you in a minute. All right, there's markings on the trees here, which is to help you with the trails, I guess. But we don't have a trail map. So we're just winging it right now. And I think in the summer months, when there's more leaves and you can't see much, the map really would come in handy. As of right now, if we got lost, we just gotta go the opposite direction of the sun and we'll end up towards the lake. It's the easiest way of uh, thinking of it. You never get lost if you know where the sun is and what time of day it is. I think, I think Dean just heard me talk about the sun. You'll always find your way if you know where the sun is. I think he's trying to prove me wrong here. No, no, I'm trying to prove you right. Oh, okay. So you draw a clock around here, and eventually you can kind of figure out the time of day. See, by the shadow. Because as All right. the sun moves, sorry, does the sun move or the earth moves? Uh, the earth moves. Right? The earth moves. Sun stays, stays so the, the same. The earth rotates, it follows the degree of the clock, which is kind of cool. Wow, look at this for a view. Oh my Lord, staggering, staggering. There's a little bit of haze starting to build, maybe because of the, the warm weather we got for this time of year, which is really weird. It's hard to believe it was snowing just a few days ago and now it's really warm. Uh, pretty high up, but straight over there is your lake. I'm just gonna give you a little zoom in and change the aperture. All right, I just want to stop the video very quickly and I just want to explain a couple of things to you very, very quickly. We came up with the idea of Cape Springs the other week and we did some research, we looked into it and it looked like a really good place to go. Uh, meant to be a couple of things we could have seen, uh, but we're not too sure whether we've seen them, missed them, or they're just no longer there. Uh, one of them was the war hideout. What we thought we was in may not have anything to do with that war hideout. Might, that might just be some rocks. So there's no way of confirming. I can't find it online, but it does say there is a war hideout. Uh, secondly, there was an old, uh, old cave, which is like a refrigeration room, uh, which sadly collapsed, so you can't access that. There's an underground lake. Oh, sadly collapsed, you can't access that either. So there's no way of finding where that is. Uh, there's meant to be caving, uh, sorry, carvings. We couldn't come across any carvings unless we just blinked and missed them. Uh, and a couple other things. Uh, the only thing we really did get to see was the barn. Uh, there may have been a few things further down where we first started off, but unfortunately there's a bunch of kids there and the lady who was with the kids was quite hostile towards us So as we were walking through. So we stayed away from there for good reasons. So maybe we'll have to go back another time, uh, but overall, it's a good walk. So anyway, back with the video. I just wanted to point that out to you. We couldn't quite find everything. You've really got to be careful where you stand here. Um, I'm trying to stay off the mossy bits the best I can. But with all these leaves, you don't know what you're standing into. And these bloody big holes. 
you could easily break a leg up here, easily. And the last thing I want to do is sit down or fall down because I'll never get back up. If I'm walking, I'm all right. When you have back issues like me, you, can't really, you don't really want to sit down. But walking's no problem. All right, on we go. Still not found anything what is listed yet, apart from the barn. I still haven't found a good cave. I still haven't found the writings on the wall or the carvings on the stones or the rocks or the trees. So let's keep, let's keep exploring. We just found uh, these markings on the on the ground. Looks like some animal's been here and just tried just digging away at something, having a scratch. And then what we noticed on our walk is things like this, where Dean's standing on. Basically, a tree falls like this, and instead of chopping it up and taking it away, they use other bits and put it next to it and make it a nice little step. And we noticed that in quite a few spaces, a few places along the walk, which is quite cool. So basically, whatever falls here stays here. I've still not seen any carvings in the trees or in the rocks. Oh, that's pretty cool though. Those holes. Oh my god. I'm taking pictures of it. Oh my god. Trying to get the shadow away from it. This rock formation, really cool, like a honeycomb. Oh my god! That's high, man. That's pretty high. Yeah, the camera won't show justice, but that is really deep down there. You know what? You. Ooh, without this equipment, I could probably slide in there. I probably never come back out though. right through. It's cool. Here, stay there. All we need now is a coffee by the campfire. But there's no coffee around here. Dean's playing with his uh, sundial he made. So 12.40, that's how much it moved in, like I said, 12.12. There's a little peg right there from the shadow. He's using his watch. These ex-army guys, eh? thinking they uh, try to con us into these things when they use a watch, really. Oh, Dean, we need coffee. We sat by the fireplace. We need a coffee. Why didn't you make it? Well, let's make a fire and get a pot and put some hot water in it. We Sorry, can we can't put hot water in it. We've got to put water in it, then make a hot water. We can come back and do that. Yeah, we're going to make a campfire. We're going to come back here again and make a coffee. All right, just so you know, I've actually loved every minute of this walk. We've been walking for over two hours and... Uh, Sadly, we're not seeing any of the things I saw on the internet that I thought I'd see. Uh, but not to worry, we've enjoyed it. Like I said, if, uh, for mental health issues, this is fantastic. Get out, the fresh air, have a lovely walk. Uh, get rid of that funk in your head of all the negativity from COVID, the elections and everything like that. Or if you've got work problems, you know, just get out in the countryside, have a walk, clear the head, get those lungs filled with fresh air and enjoy it. It does wonders for your mental health. It really does, it does wonders. Dean's gonna have a little shine in there. Oh, where do we hang? Maybe that'd be some raccoon or something. Oh, no, I can put, hang on, let's change the setting on that. The black mold, probably. Oh, wrong way. Go the other way. Change the ISO. Bump that right up. Oh, okay, I got some light now. Okay, is it better? Yeah, yeah, it's better. See what it is. It's an oil heater tank there. Oh. Oh, see right up. It's uh, passing sheet in. Ha! Run! All right. That's really it. 
sadly, uh, it wasn't as as good as I expected, unless we missed something. Um, we can't go down there because there's loads of kids, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff down there we could go and investigate. But as I say, there's kids everywhere. We don't want to go near there. This was really interesting. This is the old barn, which I believe is where Margaret Reed would have lived. And I didn't see any old carvings. Uh, a lot of like cutouts in the in the rock, like for caves. But we uh, we couldn't really get into them because we're, <laughs> we're very unfit. Um, but that said, uh, for mental health reasons, getting out for a bit of walk, fresh air, clear your head's good. Uh, Dean here, who's with me, uh, he has a, a mental health issues and it does him a world of good. And that's why we've teamed up together to come out on these big walks and it helps him deal with some of his problems. Uh, head injury and a few other things. And uh, it's great, it's great for him. And I'm sure with anyone else who's uh, having a hard time right now, I'll tell you what, just find somewhere to go for a walk. Uh, if you want to be on your own, come to a trail like this. There's plenty of them around. And just get out, get some fresh air, clear your head, and it'll do you a world of good. And you've got you to look after your mental health in this day and age, especially with what's going on around us. Anyway, until next time, we'll find something a bit more entertaining for the next one. This one turned out to be a bit of a dud. But we enjoyed the walk overall. Uh, it's good. But uh, for sights, yeah, we'll find something else. Right, we've been walking a fair bit. Dean, quiet, I'm talking. He's done it again. All right, 